Hello and welcome to another Glyphs tutorial uh, for YSDN3003 typeface design. Today I'm going to demonstrate the technique of doing a glyph substitution or glyph switching. You'll remember that in the uh, one of the first lectures for the semester I talked about and, demo and showed this technique um, from various different typefaces that perform this technique of glyph substitution throughout the design space. So let's say that when you're working with a variable font, you're dragging your slider bar, you're switching from uh, one version of a letter, like let's say this Q in a lighter weight of a font, to when you're getting to the bolder weight of a font, you're switching to a version where let's say the tail of the Q is not inside the bowl. It's a very handy technique and it's something that allows us to avoid stuff like this because this is not an ideal situation. It messes up the counter of the queue. It doesn't make that letter very legible and it's not a good design solution. It really loses its queueness, which is something that we don't want to do. And this could be something performed on any script that you might be working on. So if you're working on a script other than Latin, you could use this for uh, characters within, let's say, a very bold design space, something that goes from very light to very bold like this one, could it be a way for you to switch uh, to a different variant of a character so that it worked in a way that you were, uh, that you felt worked better to express the concept or keep a nice cohesive design. So what we're going to do to actually execute this in glyphs is we have to be Here's one of the limitations right now with Glyph's app for this particular technique is that you have to be working in a design space that only has two masters. You can't introduce more than one master or, uh, well, Glyph's is just not able to compute between having multiple what are called uh, bracket layers, which is what we're actually going to use to pull this off. It cannot have more than two masters. So remember over here, these are our two masters that we're looking at. And I'm switching between them right now because my cursor is actually over top of this. I actually have to only have a two master setup, but that's fine right now. There is a method where you can actually hack a font using command line tools where you could have many multiple, you could have multiple masters set up beyond two. You could have like 12 masters and still do the glyph substitution uh, however, I'm not going to show that in a tutorial. I will show that on a case-to-case -case basis. We'll do that together because I don't imagine that a lot of people will be having multiple master setups in our class. Uh, sorry, more than two master setups in our class and would want to also do this technique. So what we need for this technique is, remember, anything that you do in a variable font or in an open type font, which we'll talk about writing open type features in another video, is you need to have everything drawn that you actually want to switch between. So in my main interpolation space, I have technically these two things set up right now. So what you actually see inside the glyph file is you'll see that I have a queue, a regular queue drawn in the, in the normal queue glyph, and I have a alternate queue drawn. So queue.alt, in order to make a new glyph, Remember, I go down to the plus sign. It'll when I hit the plus sign, glyphs will create a glyph that's called new glyph, and I just enter whatever I want. So let's say I wanted a new, an alternate A glyph. I would hit capital A dot alt. I have to put dot alt. I cannot use a comma or something else that's an illegal character. I have to use a period. So A dot alt. For instance, if I wanted to also create an alternate for the A, which I could create a substitution for that. Uh, I could also create a substitution for G. So in order to delete a glyph, I go down here to the minus sign and remove the glyph. I could even create this. Now another way to create a, an easier way to create a new glyph, especially if I want to make another version of it, would be to hit Command D on the keyboard and I duplicate the glyph. Notice how glyphs will give it a, a 001, a three digit code. Um, when you automatically make a copy of a glyph that already exists. So if I was to then go Command D again, it will make 02, 03, etc. It'll keep going. Oh, there we go. 
what I would do then is I would just double click on that 001 and I would hit ALT. This is just something that I use. You could say g.sub. That's fair as well. But I just tend to as a matter of uh, habit and what I've particularly learned as a font designer with working with open type features, I call this alt because it's the alternate glyph that we would be working with. But let's focus on the queue. We're going to keep this quick and simple. So once you've got everything drawn, you have to once again visualize in my design space, I know that my, between very light and very bold, I have, uh, say, a, you know, I have a very large range of weight right here. And what's happening is when my queue, and for instance, right now, I'm going to use that script, open type variations player. And actually, let me pause that. I need to do something. If I highlight these and hit command T, it'll open them up in a new tab. Let us do something. Let's just run this right now. Watch what happens as this runs through the continuum. First of all, I would like to tweak that design space because I don't like how it gets kind of thin in this area up here. That looks pretty weird around the regular area. I would want that to be monolinear. But watch what happens as I get into the bold areas. This gets clogged in. It looks really bad, especially in this spot. That looks like an accident. So. There's a way to solve that. So let me close this tab. The way to work with that is to say, okay, I know that I'm guessing around uh, 500, 600. It looks like things start to look really awkward with this queue. What's unique about this particular glyph substitution technique is that I don't have to substitute the entire alphabet that I'm designing, character set. I can only, I can substitute one glyph and Here's a special exception to that rule of having to keep all your points the same. With a glyph substitution, you don't have to have the same order, amount of points, ordering of points. Yay, that's awesome, because we know that it can be a bit of a pain to work with keeping those points consistent. Now, you can't, don't sit here and think that, oh, well, this is great, I'll just use this for my entire design space. This would really bog down the file. You can't use this for everything. This is a special case solution. So let's see what we need. What we need is we need our regular queue. So remember, this, these queues right now are behaving in, a, in a, an interpolation space where they have all the same points. They have the same number of shapes. So I've got this crossbar, this shape. This is the uh, second contour, the first contour, the third. And the same thing is happening inside this glyph. So everything's cohesive. They agree with each other. However, I need to break that. Notice how in this shape, I might have the same order of outlines, but I'm changing things a little bit. I could actually break this. I could have these just be a completely merged outline, and they would still behave fine. But I mean, I left them broken open so that I could make adjustments. As you can see, I had to tuck this into the negative area of the character so the counter was revealed again. And I also need to, though, have these alternate shapes be compatible. That's important. This alternate queue has to be, this alternate light queue master has to be compatible with the alternate queue bold or ultra bold master. That's important. Okay. But when you're working on this, have these glyphs open because it's going to make your life a lot easier because you're going to copy and paste these into bracket layers. So. When I go over to the layers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the light layer. I'm going to call it light. And I'm going to hit bracket on my keyboard. And I'm just going to put right now 400 as, a, as an integer. Then I'm going to go ultra bold, copy. And I'm going to call this ultra bold. I could call it anything I want, actually. But I'm just doing this for the sake of consistency. And I'm going to call this 400 as well. These values, they have to be the same in order for it to switch at the proper spot. Basically, what I'm saying to Gliss right now is that along the continuum of this uh, axis, of this weight axis, I want you to switch to this version, this alternate glyph, at 400. So remember, the way that my design space is working is it's going between 100 and 1,000 right now. So at 400 in the space, it would be flipping to hit, um, and right now, it would be flipping 
this version for this one around 400 and of course we really just need to test it to know when that needs to occur so what we need to do then is we need to put in this bracket layer we need to actually place this version of the queue in there because this is the alternate you could even say alt light but anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna copy this one into here okay and then what I'm gonna do is go to ultra bold um, and don't get confused by this in fact what would be easier right now is if I just close this this is the Q glyph together that we're working on I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna bring in this alternate Q in here now everything is working well and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run open type variations player I'm gonna test this ah, just a second well, you see that one flipped right there but I'm gonna make this easier to look at we're gonna just get one character and watch what would happen if I drag the slider bar oh, that's awesome it's working and if I exported the font it would totally work but look what's happening in the darker areas of the space the bolder areas it's working to keep that counter open however I think it's flipping too early so with that in mind what I'm gonna do is go back into my font I don't even have to go back into my font info I'm gonna go to this Q glyph and I'm gonna say let's try uh, 600 these have to be these values by the way have to be the same and then let's drag the slider yeah so this is more comfortable I think that as we get to around this area of the space the cross the tail being in the counter starts to look a little awkward so it's good that it flips around here and once again let me play this so it's gonna flip automatically and it keeps things nice and open inside there but it reintroduces itself along the continuum there all the way to light until it comes back so what you might do is you might tweak that I would probably go with 550 if I'm actually making a design decision I'm thinking actually maybe between 400 and 600 but I'm gonna say 550 seems to be the one that works the best let's have a look yeah I think it's better when it flips there so just a process of trial and error okay that's the glyph substitution test or glyph substitution technique